Welcome everybody. So today we will be doing some problem solving. Today we will be solving problems related to sets, relations and functions. So last week there was an assignment posted. I hope you have tried them at least. And this particular problem solving session will be kind of working on problems related to that. I, will be, I have selected some four problems for this session. I will be solving them. In case there is some particular problem that you would like me to solve, then you can ask me or request me in the forum. I will be happy to take into consideration. Now let's start with the first problem. The problem says that is the statement P and Q or not P and P or a P and not Q a tautology or a contradiction or not. Now what's the tautology? A tautology basically means that it is always true. It means that does this statement for any evaluation of P and Q or any uh, whether P and Q are true or false always comes out to be true. A contradiction basically says that is it always false? And the third one says none basically means that is it that for some setting of P and Q, the statement becomes true and for some set statement it becomes false for some assignment of P and Q to true and false. Now there are two ways of doing it, of course this problem. First problem is to work out the truth table. Now the truth table here will not have too many rows because P and Q are there will be two variables hence there can only be four rows namely whether P takes true and false and Q takes true and false but the evaluation of this particular expression might require some hard work and there is always a tendency of making mistakes. So instead what we can do in such problems is that we can simplify them. So to start with, let's first try to look at this expression here. Can we simplify this expression? And the idea is that of course we can because given the fact that there is a not here and a not in the queue, we can of course try to pull this one out using the Morgan's formula. So this will become P and not of P and Q sorry not of not of P and Q. Now again this particular form part we can again apply the Morgan's formula and we can get not of P and now this will become not of Q or Q, not of not of Q is Q. So once we have this thing, then we can of course apply the distributive law and put this P inside, namely this will become first part P and not P or P and Q. Now let's see here what is this one P and not P. Now P and not P. So note remember that 
anything and false is false, right? So P and not P. If one of them is true, the other one has to be false. So some, this is of the form true and false. So this is of course false. And this expression is P false or false or something. Now note that false or something is nothing but that thing itself. And hence this is same as not of P and Q. Thus, this whole expression turns out to be, so this whole expression turns out to be, let me see, P or Q and not of P or Q. Now this is slightly easier to handle and so we can now write down the truth table of this one. Say so this is P, this is Q. Now what is this P or Q? We of course have the P and Q and the final expression. Right? So if both of them are false, let's see what happens. Both of them are false then P and Q is of course false. P or Q is also false and in that case so this is not a false means it's true but this is an or so that means this is true. Similarly now we can, can keep on writing this statement as false and true. If false and true then and here P and Q is false, P or Q is true, so negation of true is false, false and false is false. Now this already tells us that this one is true at some place and false at some place, hence it is neither a tautology nor a contradiction, it is in third category. Just to complete our understanding of this particular expression, let's see. Note that if I keep P as true and Q as false, this is same because this is a expression that is symmetric. So you will still get false. And the last one is if both of them are true, then this would be true, this would be true, and then true or not of true means false, so true or false is true. Thus, you can see that for two of these cases it becomes false, for two of the cases it becomes true. Right? Now for the exercises as well as the assignments that will be posted, you will be asked to solve multiple choice questions. They are of course easier to handle but if you can understand how to prove these statements or this kind of statement it will be helpful for you to attack the problems and that is the right way of doing it because of some various constraints that we have for holding this uh, course online we cannot ask you to solve problems which are subjective type but we encourage you to solve them at home. Okay, now moving on.
Okay, now moving on, let's go to the second problem. The second problem says that write a negation for the following statements. Okay? So let's look at the first one. The first one says that for all real numbers x, if x square is greater than or equal to 1, then x is not equal to 0. Now there are multiple ways of doing it. Firstly, let's look here. So this statement is of the form therefore all x x square greater than or equal to 1 implies x is strictly less than 0. So if I want to take a negation of this, now the negation of this it will become of course there exists x such that x square greater than or equal to 1 does not imply x is greater than 0. So it's a negation it for all changes to there exists and this expression is the predicate and this one negation of this. So a implies b, opposite of that is a does not imply b. Okay, but now how can you write this statement? A does not imply b. Now there are various ways of writing a does not equal to b. So one of the ways of seeing it is that how do you write a implies b? We have seen this one in our in you know, our lecture notes on proof by contradiction. Namely, a implies b is same as saying. A and sorry, A and B. No, this is not proof. It's same as saying not A or not B. Now, why is this true? The basic idea is that A implies B. In other words, if A happens, then B must happen. So either A does not happen, which is not A, or B does not happen. Sorry, or B happens. Yeah. So either A does not happen or B happens. So A implies B is same as not A or B. Now, see, as you can see, that even I am a bit confused over what is the right one. So the best way of taking it is actually to write down the truth table. So let's just quickly write down the truth table and we'll convince that this is a state correct statement. So if it is A, B, this is A implies B and this is the other one which is not A or B. So if A is false, both of them are false, then A implies B is true because a falls equal as anything and then this one is of course not a that means this is true okay if it is false and this is true then again a implies b is true because false implies anything and again same logic this is true because not a is always true let's see if this is true and the b is false then a implies b is false but now here, not A is false and B is also false, so this is false and false is false. 
and the other last one is true and true. If both of them are true, true implies true is true. And what is A? Then not A is false, but B is true. So no, true and false is true. As you can see, both these columns are same. And hence, we can say that A implies B is from the same as not A or B. Now here you see the usefulness of having this, this propositional logic. Sometimes we ourselves get confused, you don't have to memorize it, but the propositional logic, the understanding it through truth table helps us to quickly check whether the thing that we remember is correct or wrong. So in other words, we can say here that A implies B is same as not A and or B. So now this statement is, we can write it as, of course, there exists A and negation of not A or B, which is, this one is A, of course, and this is B. So which means that this is not of A, now we can apply the model's law not of not of A is A and not of B or in other words there exists A such that X squared is greater than or equal to 1 and X is not equal to not greater than 0 or less than or equal to 0 right so this is the negation of this statement so while the implication not, does not imply is also a bad thing, but writing it in this form of A, not A or B helps us to solve it. So the negation of this following statement is this. Now let's go to the second one. Second one says, for all integers a, b and c, a minus b is even and b minus c is even, then a minus c is even. Let us apply the same rules this time. Here of course, this one, we have two parts, right, a and b and c. So we have a and B implies C. By the same logic as we just now did, this should be congruent to not of A and B and sorry or or C. Now by De Morgan's law this is same as not of A or not of B or C. So when we take the negation of course this for all becomes there exists so it should be there exists A, B and C such that not of A meaning A minus B is or or b minus c is or or a minus c is even. Right? Now note that there can be multiple ways of writing the negation of this following this statement. And I encourage you to discuss on the forum what are the various different expressions for this statement that can come.
Now going to the third problem. So the problem states that if A and B are two sets such that size of A is 8 and size of B is 9 and A union B is 15, then what is the size of A intersection B? Now of course I have missed a bar here, it should be A intersection B. Now to get to such kind of, to solve this kind of problem, the best way is to draw the Venn diagram. We have discussed this in the class. We call this one the universe U. Here is the representation of the set A. Here is the representation of the set B. Now this says that this particular area is A. So this is A and this is B. So if I draw this and if I draw this B with this red lines. Now, what is A? Size of A is 8. Right? So, then the black area is 8. Size of B is 9. So, the black area is 9. And the union is 15. So, the area of the whole shaded area is 15. Even just by looking at this one, you can see that what is A union B? Now, the A union B is of course, if you take the size of A plus size of B, you what do we have? You count the black area, black shaded area once, the red shaded area once, and in other in, in by doing so, you count the area that is shaded both with red and black twice. So if I subtract that area, which is of course A intersection B, I should be getting exactly the area of A union B. And that's what all is equal. Just by looking at the Venn diagram, you can decide how to draw this one. Now this one is 15, this is 8, this is 17. So what is A intersection B? Now A intersection B is nothing but A plus B, which is 8 plus 9, minus A union B, which is 15, which is nothing but The Venn diagram is a very useful thing to do. By doing the Venn diagram, you will be able to understand how the sets are distributed very easily. Okay. Now let's go to the fourth problem here. It says that to check the truth of the following statements. First one, if every integer, if every even integer is divisible by 4, sorry, every even integer is divisible by 4, if and only if either 7 divides 21 or 9 divides 12. Now this, to, to understand this statement, you have to understand what are the sub-propositions. So this one, every even integer is divisible by 4 is say 8. If and only if either 7 divides 12, this is B. And 9 divides 12 is C. So the statement is of the form A if and only if B or C. Now here, is every even integer divisible by 4? Of course not. For example, 6 is an even integer and it is not divisible by 4. So this is false. So false in if and only if. Now what is B? 7 divides 12, 21. And this is of course true. 7 does divide 21, which is true. And this one is 9 divides 12. So, this is of course false, 9 doesn't divide 12, false. So, 
false if and only if true or false. So what is true or false? True or false is nothing but true. So false if and only if true. Now false of course implies true, but true does not imply false. And hence, since true does not imply false, this statement is false. The whole statement. Right? So just converting it, understanding which are the statements as the sub statement, writing the proposition and understand then just understanding whether that is true or false gives us the right answer. Now let's do the second part. So this was the first part. For the second part, it says either snow is hot or two is even implies three is even. Again, let's look at the sub part. They call this one say D, two is even E, and three is even F. Now F is not a good idea, maybe G. So what this says is that D or E implies G. Now let's see. D is snow is hot? No, it's not. Snow is clearly not hot. So these are false. Or what is E? 2 is even. 2 is even is of course true. And this implies 3 is even, which is false. Again, it's true or false is true. True does not imply even, uh, imply false. Hence, this is also a false statement. So these were the four problems that we did in this particular problem solving session. If you have any more questions that you would like me to discuss on propositional logic, sets, relations, so on, just feel free to request in the forum and I will try to accommodate it in the next problem solving video. Thank you.